All right, so I'm using Autodesk Circuits, previously 123D. Um, let's take a look at the interface first here. Up in the top corner, I've got a settings view, and I, if I click on that, it gives me a couple options. First thing we should do with a new project is change the name. So I've named mine Burroughs Project 1. I can change that if I want. Um, but you need to change your name of your project so it's something that you're going to remember. We've also got schematic view, which I don't have anything in yet. We've got a PCB view, which this is where we would actually make the circuit board if we were going to go all the way through with it. We've got a component list, so a bill of materials, which again, we don't have any materials yet, so nothing is showing up there. Now let's go back to the, to the um, breadboard view. We've also got a code editor. That's where we can write the C code for the program. We've got a place where we store all of our components that we can work with. And we've got a button to start any simulations. So that's the interface in a nutshell. Um, you can use the roller on your mouse to zoom. So let's take a look at this breadboard. Now, if you've never seen one of these before, it just looks like a series of holes. Now, the way this works is all of the vertical holes are connected. So you can see how they've been marked out in green when I mouse over them. That means that row is connected. This row here is connected together, but they are not connected to there. If I wanted these to be connected, I'd have to go through and draw a wire like that. And now this would be connected to that. So each of these rows is connected and they're not connected to the lower portion. So if I look here, you can see that there is no green line going up to this row. These are split in the middle. Now up at the top, we've got two more rows. And if you notice, they're marked with a plus and a minus. So this row all the way across is connected. And this is, it's intended that this would be your positive voltage. And again here, we've got the negative sign and this row is connected. So it's assumed or that this is going to be your negative voltage. So when we put our power supply in, we would hook ground to here, positive to here, and everything else would work off of that. Now for what we're doing today, though, this breadboard is a bit big, so I'm just going to click on it and delete it. So I've got nothing left on my screen, and I'm going to go to Components, and you can scroll through Components and see what you have. So I've got resistors and LEDs and batteries, a whole bunch of stuff here, but I'm going to look for a smaller breadboard. Scroll down, and you should be able to find something. There we go. So I've got breadboard small. Now we've also got the mini breadboard, but it doesn't have the positive negative rails. So I want the small one. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag it up into my screen. So just a little smaller, a little easier to work with. Okay, the next thing that I need to do is get a microcontroller that I can use. Now specifically, we're going to be using an Arduino for this project. Um, there's no Arduino, um, there is no small Arduino that we're going to be using for our project, but there is the Arduino Revision 3, which will work just fine for this. So I'm going to click on that and drag that up as well, like so. And I'm just going to rotate it, make it a bit easier to work with here. So there I've got my Arduino, and I've got my breadboard that I'm going to work from. So for the first lab, we're only going to need an, one LED and a resistor. So I'm going to go back to my components and I'm going to find that the resistor. I'm going to put the resistor over that gap in the board. Give it a components for a second. So you can see that it's in the two holes there. So now electricity is going to come from this side through the resistor down to that side as soon as it's hooked up. And I'm going to change the value of this resistor to 300 ohms. And you can see as I did that, the colors changed. Uh, the colors are, there we go, brown. The colors are color code. So we've got orange means three, black means uh, one level of zero, and brown means one more. So we've got three, zero, zero, so 300. Different codes are going to give you different values. 
So the next component that we're going to need is a resistor, or sorry, an LED. So I'm going to grab the LED here. I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to put it in like that. Now, when I look at an LED, it's very specific how current's got to go through an LED. And if we see this side's flat, that's our ground, our negative side. So we've got to go from, electricity's got to go from this side through that longer leg down through the flat side through the short leg. So if I put electricity from the short leg to the positive leg, it's not going to work. So I've got to go from the long leg to the short leg. Um, because of that, I'm just going to take my resistor and move it over to that positive leg. So I'm going from the resistor through like so. Um, now I can start adding a few wires. So I'm going to add a ground wire for this one. I'm going to leave that that ground empty because I'm going to add another one later. And I'm going to make this a black wire because ground wire should be black. And let's add let's try to get some curve to that. We'll go from ground GND which it means ground on the Arduino and for most electronics up to our negative our ground here. And again we'll make that a black wire because we want ground wires to be black. So you can see I've got, now I've got everything set up. I've got resistor going through the LED, going to ground. And then I've got ground tied into ground on the Arduino board. Uh, the only issue that I'm having right now is that I've got nothing bringing power, an electrical signal to this resistor. So I'm going to go and I'm going to draw one more wire from the resistor. to pin 13 and the color of this wire doesn't actually matter I'm just gonna leave it green for now so now I've got a full circuit I've got my power source pin 13 going through the resistor going through the LED to ground and then back to ground on here zoom out you can kinda of see a bit better the whole nature of the circuit so the next step is we need to add a bit of programming to this. If I click on code editor, we've got a basic program that comes up by default. So whenever you open it, you're gonna end up with this program as well. Now, we've got three main components to this program. We've got the scope of the program, which is here. So in the scope, this is where we assign names to things. So I've assigned the name LED, to 13. So integer LED is going to equal 13. If I look here, I've got 13 plugged into the LED. So I know, okay, LED is 13. If I was going to add a second LED, I could plug it into 12 and I could say LED 2 equals 12. Um, I've also got a lot of information in here, which is just comments. So from line 1 to 5, the only thing that matters is line 3. But it's good to have these con comments in here because it helps me understand what's going on. So if you've got the double forward slash, it means that this code's not actually used. So we can use that to make a comment. So pin 13 has an LED connected on most Arduino boards. Yeah. We're giving it a name. That's LED 13. And then this line is actually talking about the setup below. It brings us to the next one. So the next component of this program is our void setup. Now the void setup is a function. You can have multiple functions within a code, but void setup on its own is considered a function. So it's something that is going to happen in the program. Now in the Arduino environment, setup only runs once. It's not like our loop that just runs over and over again. And in here, what I've done is I've said that the LED needs to be an output. We've got two options with the digital pin. So 13 would be a digital pin, and that is it can be an input or it can be an output. In this case, we want the LED to be an output. So I write this line of code, pin mode, in brackets, LED, comma, output, and that just sets that pin to an output. And again, I've got my comment telling me what I've done. And if you notice, functions always have these curly brackets that the actual information is put inside. If I come down to my void loop, 
this is the actual program that's running all the time. So again, it is a function, but this is a function that just runs over and over and over again. So I've said digital write LED high. Delay 1000 milliseconds, which would be one second. Then digital write LED low. Then again, delay 1000. And we can see our comments here. Turn the LED on. High is voltage is the voltage level. Wait a second. Turn the LED off by making the voltage low. Um, so writing high, it just turns the electricity on to pin 13. We wait a second. We turn the electricity off to pin 13. We wait another second, and then it happens again and again and again. If I take this program and click upload and run, you can see now, if I've made the circuit properly, my LED should be flashing. So on and off, on and off. We can play with this program a little bit if we wanted. Mostly the, the delay times you can play with. So let's say, let's, oh, we have to go stop simulation. And I change my delay time to 500, like so, and I go upload and run again, you'll see that it's twice as fast. Cool. So the next step that I want you to do is try to add in another LED. To do that, we go back to stop simulation We can go back to component. I'm going to bring another LED in here. Just put it right next to it. I'm going to bring another resistor up and I'm going to put the resistor in. Same as before, I'm going to change its resistance to 300 ohms. I'm going to make my ground wire and make that black. Getting kind of funky with the curves here. Connected into 12. So now I've got that second LED hooked up. I can go into my code editor. And now we're going to double up the code. So I've got integer LED equals 13 here. I'm just going to go control copy, enter, control paste. We'll call that LED2 now. And LED2 is going to be in pin 12. We're also going to take the pin mode line, control copy. I'm just going to fix that spacing a bit. And we'll make pin mode 2 an output. So it's pretty simple. We're just adding another line to the scope another line to the setup. Come down here, I'm going to cut and paste this line too. Control copy, control V. We'll make that LED 2. And control copy, control paste, and we'll make this LED 2 as well. So now it's all set up so they should both turn on, they should both turn off. If I click upload and run, now I've got both LEDs turning on at the same time. If I wanted to make it a little different, I could take my code and say when I want when LED is on, I want LED2 to be low. And when LED2 is on, I want LED to be high. Upload and run again. Uh, it, what did I do wrong? Oh, I see what I did. So I just made this one backwards. So I'll change this back to high. Oops, stop simulation. Let's make this high. And we're going to make this one low. Start simulation and it should. There we go. So now they're pulsing back and forth. The next step that I want you to do with this tutorial is add two more LEDs and make them flash at different times. So you should have four LEDs in your circuit. All right.